I think I may have found the cheapest panini grill out there. I paid a whopping $12.99 for this. Now, notice that they do not call it a panini press. They call it a panini grill. So let's open this up and check it out. So here's what it looks like out of the box. And let's open it up. It's basically just one of the small contact grills like a lot of others. Now, one thing this doesn't have is it doesn't have any type of grease tray or anything or any recessed area where the drippings and the grease can come out. But I don't think a lot of them in this price range would have that anyway. The surface is not all that big. It's only about four inches by about seven and a half. So you're not gonna be able to make multiple sandwiches or big sandwiches on this. But again, it's a $12.99 panini grill. So I don't think you can expect too much out of it size wise. I don't know how well a thicker bread is gonna work in here. I've got a few different breads that I wanna try. And the cooking area is recessed a little bit. Not much though. So I'm kind of concerned that maybe the thicker breads, I might not be able to get it closed because it does have this locking mechanism, but I don't know if it's going to be able to completely close and lock with the thicker breads. Okay, I've got the panini grill closed and heating up ready to make a sandwich. The first bread I'm going to be trying is some Italian bread. It's really just kind of part of a loaf. I had to cut it down because it obviously was not going to fit on the small panini grill like it was. Okay, it's ready, and again, I'm going to follow the manufacturer's instructions to butter the bottom piece of bread. Place it on the panini grill. I'm going to add my toppings, which is turkey. I'm going to use a little bit of my own seasoning. Some provolone cheese. Some lettuce. I'm going to put some mayonnaise on my top bun. Put it on top. Now you can see the sandwich is already pretty high. Add some butter. Now I'm going to try to close it. It says do not force it closed. And this is not working too well. Move that back a little bit. I am only putting gentle pressure. I don't want to break the hinges or anything else. And it's closing very slowly, but it is closing. So I don't know if I'll be able to get it closed all the way so that I can lock this latch or not, but we'll see. I may just have to hold it. It says cook for two or three minutes, so I'll monitor it and see when I think it needs to come off. The top of it, it gets pretty hot, but it's not so hot that it'll burn you if you touch it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this thing completely closed. Now, if I had spent 40 or 50 or $60 on a panini press, of course, that would be totally unacceptable. But for a $13 panini press, I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially when using thick bread like I'm using here. And by the way, I'm still squeezing this little by little and being careful not to squeeze it too much to avoid breaking it. All right, let's check it. It's been about a minute and a half. And it's probably ready to go. I really just want to see if I'm going to get it to the point where I can close it. But I don't think that I am. But the cheese is nice and melted. So let me get a plate and pull this off. All right. All right, so 
So there's the first panini on the $13 panini press. There's the bottom. Looks good, smells good, and I'm really not even that disappointed that I couldn't get it shut any further. It did smush the top bread down, I think a little bit more than the bottom bread in some places, but either way, for $13, uh, panini press that you're going to use occasionally. I think it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, I'm getting this cleaned up for the next sandwich. I want to see if the stuff was going to come off pretty easily or if it was going to take much effort. And for the most part, it's coming off pretty easy. So the non-stick is working pretty good. There's a little bit of stuff there that was a little bit tougher to get off, but it came off came off nicely. Next, I have a couple ciabatta rolls that I'm going to try. And these are a little bit thinner than the Italian bread was. And I'm not sure if they're both going to fit, but I guess we'll see. And it's tight, but I think it's going to work. Okay, I dressed those the same way as I did the previous sandwich. And these are filling up the whole space a little bit more. So there may be another issue with getting it closed and locked. All right, let's try it out. One of the issues is, especially with this much food on here at one time, is it's pushing those top buns forward a little bit more than I would like. So again, I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on it, trying to squeeze it closed. And I can see already that it's hanging over the cooking area onto the handle port. And if you look, you can see right here the top bun is being pushed forward. So you really can't overstuff these things. So with that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these out and just cook one at a time and see if that will fix the issue. Let me turn it like this. Alright, I was even able to lock it like that. So I think the moral of the story here is, for such a small panini grill, you really can't crowd the cooking area if you want to be able to lock it and not have to hold it. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. So let's check the progress. Oh yeah, that's ready to come off. As I was slowly closing the second ciabatta panini, I noticed that I really didn't get the sizzle until I got it closed all the way and locked. So it may be a little bit of difference in how it comes out depending on if you can actually get the little panini grill closed all the way and locked or are just holding it. My second one is done. And there's a look at those. Cleanup is still pretty easy without anything really sticking and just not coming off. The last thing I'm going to try to cook on the little panini grill is just a regular grilled cheese on white bread with American cheese. And I don't think it's going to crush the bread too much being that the area inside is kind of recessed, but let's try it out and see. First I'll put some butter on my bread. I think that way it'll be a little better. My three slices of American. And finally my top piece of bread. Okay, let's close it up. No problems with closing it up. 
um, obviously since the bread is much smaller. So let me give this about a minute and a half to cook and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, it's been about a minute and a half. Let's see how the grilled cheese is going. Oh, it's looking pretty good. The cheese is not quite melted all the way through yet. So let me give it about another 30 or 45 seconds. Okay, it's been about 45 more seconds. And let me see if the cheese is melted. Yeah, it's melted pretty good. So I think I'm gonna pull this off and let's have a look at the bottom. I think as an overall, it came out pretty good. So for something like a grilled cheese, you know, they're not hard to make in a skillet on the stove, but for a lot of people, this may be a little bit easier to make one. And I think I could have made two of them on the little panini griddle because that really takes up just about exactly half the amount of space. So you could do two of them at a time on it. The grilled cheese did take another 45 seconds to cook. So you're looking at about two minutes and 15 seconds, but not much longer than what the paninis took. 